Hello everyone. Good evening. Welcome to Let's Tune. I am Shweta, and today's topic is going to be on nouns. So it is so wonderful to have you all around here, and I hope that you will comment and ask doubts and use the chat box carefully so that you can get your doubts and queries resolved. But before we get uh, started, let us discuss about the topic that we are going to do today, which is nouns. Oh, hello, hello! So good to see you all. Thank you so much for uh, commenting. Please keep commenting so I can see your comments and respond. As you all know, today's topic is going to be on nouns. I expect that all of you should interact well, and I hope that we all will have fun together and we'll be able to answer all your queries and questions. Hi, Sanumi. Hi. Uh, Hamid, if I miss out anyone, I'm very sorry. I'll try to keep up as much as possible. It is wonderful that all of you are being so polite and nice. It's uh, it's really wonderful for us, even as someone who is talking about the topic to speak on it. Okay, and so before we get into uh, our topic, I'm going to share my PPT today. Okay, so I'm going to use the PPT and I'm going to talk about the topic. Okay, if you have any doubts. Kindly add it in the comments so I can also see. As you add it in the comments, I can also respond. Okay, so let us keep it highly interactive. Let us keep it highly, uh, you know, like let's keep the session very fun for all of us. Okay, uh, is it going to be a full grammar course? Uh, it is not a full grammar course as of yet, Raj. It is just a session today. I have taken up one topic today on nouns, and I am going to speak on it. So that's what exactly what I'm doing right now. It won't be a full grammar course, but as you rightfully brought up one thing, yes, we at Let's Do do have a very, very, very good uh, spoken English course, and we have a lot of information about that, which I will be sharing throughout the event. As you can see on the screen, I have shared my PPT on nouns. Again, then again, I'm going to. I uh, I'm asking you all to be very interactive. Use the chat box well. Let's uh, keep the language very clean and polite, and that's all. Most of all, let's have fun and learn something new. Okay. If at all you have any trouble seeing or hearing me, please do add so on the chat. I'm so glad to see such a good turnout. There are almost fifty-four of us. That's very nice. It's always nice to see so many people in and around, right? Okay. I'm going to get started with the topic. Okay. This is a very basic. Grammar topic. Okay, we are going to have many more sessions. Okay, on uh, various grammar topics. So today, which is one of our first days, we thought let's stick to something very simple. Let's stick to nouns. As you all know, nouns are the basic part of any grammatical subject. Right? Any grammar. Nouns are basic as well as they are something that are you know. Almost ninety percentage of our language includes nouns. Okay, so now I'm going to start my PPT, and as I go along, I will be telling you all the courses, all the wonderful options we have here at Let's Do. And in the last ten minutes, I want you to put forward whatever doubts and queries that you have. Okay, so let us get started. I hope my PPT is coming across correctly. As you can see, my topic today is on nouns, right? And remember, we are to, we have a few objectives for today, right? Our objectives today are we are going to learn what are nouns, we are going to learn the types of nouns, we are going to have a few exercises, a very few short exercises with each other, and then we are going to have a nice little discussion. Okay, so I want some. Excitement! I want some interaction, as I've always said. So let's keep the energy going, guys. Okay? What are nouns? Right? What are nouns? Nouns are vast. They are also the simplest part of grammar. What is a noun? A noun is a word or word group that is used to name a person, place, or thing, or an idea. So now imagine how many nouns we would have in the English language, right? How many nouns we would have in our English language? Let's look at the example. We see that nouns are used for people, 
they are used for places, they are used for things and they are used for ideas. Anytime you read or write, remember you are dealing with a lot of nouns. Let's look at an example. When it comes to person, it can be the general idea of who a person is. For instance, a teacher, a mother or even the person's name. Right? When places, we talk about school, mall generally and a particular place, Mumbai. Things. Things. We have so many things around us. What we are interacting with? I'm using a camera. That's a thing. I'm using a laptop. That is a thing. And you must be using a mobile phone while viewing this session. So that is also a thing. And it also includes ideas. Things such as love, courage, freedom. We all know that there are a lot of ideas in this world, right? When we have emotions, feelings, these are things that we cannot see or touch. They are things that we feel, but they are just as powerful. Okay, so let us continue on. Let's talk about proper nouns. Right? Let's talk about proper nouns. Now, what is a proper noun? I hope you can see my PPT as it uh, changes. Right? Let's talk about proper nouns. Give me a second. I hope you are able to see my PPT. I hope uh, you are able to see the various slides in my PPT. Let me take a quick gander. Yes. I think you can. Yes, I think you can. Right? Let's talk about proper nouns. When a noun talks about a particular person, a place, a thing, or an idea, it is a proper noun. Remember, proper noun always begins with a capital letter. Your name is a proper noun. Right? All the places that you live in, India, Mumbai, Delhi, all of these comes under proper noun. Things like movie names, all of them come under proper noun. Uh, if possible, I would like it if you would talk, uh, if you would uh, if you feel free, please drop your name so that we get to know your proper nouns as well. So you can see the usage of proper nouns in action. Every one of you with your names, all of that comes under proper nouns. Okay, I'm going to continue. Obviously, we're going to get the last ten minutes to ask any doubts, so don't worry. I will definitely take in all your doubts. Okay, common nouns. Now, what are common nouns? Common nouns name any one of a group of persons, places, things, ideas, and is generally not capitalized. Now, this sounds very complicated, but it is very simple. Common nouns use one word to talk about an entire group. When I am saying something such as... Uh, when we use... Certain words such as mother, father, parent, president, country, religion, right? All of this comes under common law because they are very common. Girl, boy, child, student, all of these comes under common laws. Okay? Let us go into abstract nouns. Now what are abstract nouns? Abstract nouns are an idea, a feeling, a quality or a characteristic. Now we know, we discussed about ideas in the beginning. Ideas are things that you cannot touch or send or you know, you can't physically interact with it. It is something that is intangible. You cannot use your five senses to go about it. Right? It is just a Thing that you feel, things such as love, fun, wisdom, bravery. Now, what is a quality or characteristic? It is a part of your character, who you are as a person. He's a courageous man, courageous, wisdom, bravery, intelligence. All of these comes under abstract nouns because they are just ideas. Okay. Collective noun. Collective noun is a word or phrase that represents a group of people or things but is treated as a singular entity. Now this sounds complicated. Let me simplify it. 
when you have a group of people for instance who do the same thing or there is something common amongst them you will use one word to describe them that is what comes under collective noun when i say alumni i am talking about people who studied in the same institution alumni right that's why they are called as alumni when i talk about faculty i'm talking about people who work for the same place faculty when i talk about committee i'm talking about people who work for the same organization same department committee team they are all working together to get something done come okay so we are taking a huge idea boiling it out to one word Let's look at some more examples. I'm talking about a batch of cakes, a brood of hens, a litter of cups, so on and so forth. A sloth of bears, a pride of lion. A sloth of bears. Now, what does the word sloth over here means? You guys do know that there is a very adorable animal called a sloth, but a group of bears are also called a sloth or Sloth, sloth of bears. Isn't that fascinating? A litter of cubs. When you have so many cute little cubs, what are cubs? Cubs are what? Baby lions, tigers. They're called as cubs. A brood of hens. A batch of kids. Right? A pride of lions. Okay. Compound nouns. Now, what happens in a compound noun? you join two or more nouns together to form a compound noun right boy plus friend becomes boyfriend ice plus land becomes iceland did you guys know iceland is not actually a very cold place but greenland is there is a very interesting fact amongst the names of these two countries iceland and greenland it is greenland that's very cold but iceland is sort of fine as a very fine sort of a weather brother plus in law becomes brother in law in the same way we have mother in law father in law sister in law and so much more grass plus hopper becomes grasshopper now you all know grasshoppers they are very small they come into our houses during summer times they are very harmless sort of creatures okay now now let us look at the ways in which you can write compound nouns I use this image because it simplifies things so much, right? Sometimes compound nouns will have spaces between them: ice cream, swimming pool, bus stop, living room. Living room. Another. Uh, what is living room? Living room is an Americanized word which talks about the front room of the house. We commonly call it the hall, right? Words, compound nouns without any spaces. Classmate, greenhouse. Now, what is greenhouse? it is a place where you can grow plants especially in foreign countries when there is winter and when snow comes into the picture a greenhouse is very important it keeps the plants protected right it it keeps it is a, it's a very controlled environment that they grow the plants grasshopper we saw life span you all know what life span life spans right anything with hyphen now what are hyphens hyphens are these little Till, can you see those little marks over there? That's called as a hyphen. Why do you use hyphens in a compound noun to divide it up? Hyphens, dry cleaning, self-confidence, merry-go-round. It's a merry-go-round. Can any one of you tell me what is a merry-go-round? What is a merry-go-round? Okay. Uh, if you if you know the answer, kindly add it on chat. I would be gladly take it up. Now let us go on to the next type, which are singular and plural nouns. What is singular and plural? Singular and plural are very simple things. Singular means one. Plural means many. Okay. Right? Singular noun means one person, place, thing, or idea. My pencil is broken. May I borrow a piece of paper? May I borrow a pen? One thing. Plural noun means more than one person, 
प्लेस थीम और आइडिया मोर देन मेनी माय पेंसिल्स आर ब्रोकन माय पेपर्स आर स्कैटर्ड अराउंड द फ्लोर पेंसिल्स नाउ पेंसिल्स आर मेनी पेपर्स मेनी पेपर्स uh we also has some rules associated with singular and plural so let's look into that okay rules for plural nouns now these are not hard and fast rules guys remember that these rules are important because they help us control the spelling these rules will help us make the transition from singular to plural much more easier okay most nouns add s to form the plural we saw those examples behind no? pencil pencils paper papers nouns that end with sh ch x z or s will add es yes now these are all rules that will help you remember but one thing i can tell you if you are someone who uses english regularly these these rules will become a part of the way you write you needn't exactly remember them as such but they are helpful any time you see a word that ends in one or any one of these letters if you know the rule you will be immediately able to correlate right Ver nouns end with vowel plus y and s now what are vowels a e i o u these are the vowels the rest of the alphabets become the consonants okay nouns that end with consonant plus y change y to i and add s what do you do y consonant plus i so y what do you do you will change the y to i and add es okay remember there are some exception to this rule as well so keep that in mind nouns that end with f or fe change the f or fe to bes life lives nouns that end with vowel plus o add s vowel plus o add s nouns end with consonant plus o add es consonant plus o add es any doubts in any of these guys anything please do let me know okay possessive nouns right what is possessive we see this word being used often such a possessive person possessive means you are very jealous you are you want ownership over something or someone now what is a possessive noun it shows a ownership shweta's laptop it is not just anybody's laptop it is shweta's laptop the apostrophe s shows the ownership a possessive noun shows ownership it uses an apostrophe look this is the symbol for apostrophe plus an s at the end apostrophe plus an s at the end right the boys basketball but remember this apostrophe and s you add to words that don't end in s but now if you have a word that ends in s you will simply put just the apostrophe this is a common mistake i see many people making remember we will only put the apostrophe this is not required the boys basketball team is walking down the hall i borrowed my sister's shirt okay let us do a short exercise okay if now that you have seen the different types of nouns i'm opening up the floor to all of you please ask any doubts that you want to ask but and let us do a short exercise because there are so many of us let us try doing something okay listed below are some nouns state their two forms of the verbs used in plural okay sister will become what sister singular what is the plural of sister what is the plural of the verb sister anybody sisters cloth will become clothes and es will come in between es clothes bucket will become buckets and s will be added at the end 
criterion. This one is very interesting. We know the plural version of this word, but we don't use the singular form so much. This is the singular form. What is this word? This word is nothing but criteria. Criteria. Now, what is criteria? Criteria is something that gives the requirements of something. This is my criteria. These are the things that I am looking for. Right? Criteria. Criterion singular. This is my criterion. Okay. Let us try to do something a little bit fun. If you are comfortable, let us use nouns. Now, let us do a small activity in nouns where we talk about the name. Again, that comes under which type of noun? Proper noun. Your place of residence, that also will come under proper noun. Favorite movies or books. If you are just talking about a certain genre. Now, what is a genre? What is a genre? This word is pronounced genre. What is a genre? Genre is like something in general. For instance, thriller is a genre. Romance is a genre. That will come under common now. If I am talking about a particular movie, say Om Shanti Om. That is again proper noun. Favorite restaurants. Then again proper noun. Favorite animal. That will come as a common noun. For instance, wolf. Right? And we can also give the collective noun of it. Right? A pack of wolves. Wolf, singular. Wolves, plural. Okay? So, let's now discuss a few things. I can see quite a few of you are on chat. I highly encourage you all to add some more, anything that you want to add. And as you add, I'm also going to talk a little bit about let's do it and the various courses and the various things that we have for the students here. Okay. So let's get started. I have, uh, I'm going to stop sharing my PPT now and I'm going to get started. Okay, sisters, clothes, bucket, criteria. Yes, Vivek, that's very good. I can, very good. Currently, Vivek got it right. And Ankita, thank you so much. Clothes, sisters, yes, I like the fact that you got the spellings right. Uh, let us see. Uh, there are quite a few of us, so let me quickly go through the, yes. Now, we, uh, I'm going to get in. To all of the different course offerings that we have at Let's Do It. As you can see, that our account has uh, shared a link on our spoken English course. As we know, English is very important in our day to day life, and I highly encourage all of you to apply for the spoken English course so that you can learn and improve your language, right? And it comes at a very affordable rate. And you will see a lot of improvement because you have test modules, you have so much more in that course. Okay, and let's see. I am going through some more comments. I hope you also go through our website, let's you.com, because we also have a lot of things in there. We also have a very special magazine that we have just English that you can read, which is also very uh, informative. You will learn new words, vocabulary, idioms. And we are also coming out, most importantly, with a grammar book which is going to uh, describe about the various types, parts of speech, various uh, exercises and things like that. So we have a lot of exciting things coming up for you all. So now I'm going to go through little by little. Oh, Sanya has given maid plus servant as maid servant. Okay. Sanya, one more thing. Remember, we used to use maid servant, but nowadays people prefer the term domestic work. I am just writing that on the chat domestic worker as much as possible please avoid using maid servant because it is not very politically correct but yes grammatically it is correct but politically not so much okay and let's see is anyone classed and see i'm doing fine shabnam thank you for ice cream our teacher ice cream very good merry go round we see them in a fair thank you so much yes that's so good what is a fair fair is a 
place where you know all um, every once in a year whenever there's a festival people come in they they set up uh, kiosks and things like that and merry go round is a round one that goes round and round and round very good very good Ma'am, presentation isn't clear. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I did my best as much. And uh, anything else? Any other doubts that anybody else asks? Possessive. Okay. All right. Sisters criteria. Domestic worker. Verbs. We will be having uh, verbs in the upcoming classes with Fatima. Okay. Can you explain how gardener is proper as it is professional? No, Ankita, it is not uh, proper now. Unless we are talking about the name of the gardener. For instance, the name of the gardener is, uh, say for example, Shweta. That becomes a proper now. If it is a profession, it is usually a common now. Teacher, student. Uh, mm, what else? What else can I say? Teacher, student, scientist. Geographer, all of them comes under. Ankita, I didn't get what you meant by possessive. I didn't get what you meant by possessive. Please be a bit uh, clear. Please be a bit clear so I can help you out a little bit better. Grammar is main or practice is main? Okay, good question. Grammar is, of course, very important, right? As a speaker, you need grammar. Grammar is like the building blocks of language. I want you to think of it that way. If you want to be very good at it, you need to have all the basic parts of grammar. Right? So you learn the theory and you put it in practice. That is just as important. You learn the theory. This is with not just grammar, any subject. Just practical, bookish knowledge is not enough. You have to also get the practice of it. If I just teach you grammar, if I just teach you about nouns and discuss, but if you don't practice it, if you don't look and see nouns around you, it is of no use. It is forgotten. This is just a video that you watch and you forget. Right? Uh, I hope that cleared that up, student. Uh, I'll tell you, Akita. I'll get there. Teacher, I want to know when is your next live session. It's going to be next Saturday. Every Saturday from 5 to 5.30, we are going to have a lot of exciting topics. And I hope to see you all and I hope that we get to interact like this. Okay, I, Ankita, I want to, when do we put S and apostrophe S and S? No, we never put S in possessive now. Remember that, Ankita. I'm just giving you an example. For instance, when I say Ankita's laptop, right? Your name and then an apostrophe S. And then you put computer, Ankita's computer. Then I put because it is yours, right? If it is Shweta, I'll say Shweta's computer, right? And uh, when you when ima remember, imagine that the word already has an S to it. Maybe it's a person's name that already ends with S, right? Then you will just put the apostrophe. Then you just put the apostrophe. For instance, uh, can we, can you, boss, let's take the word boss. I'm talking about my boss's phone. So I just put boss, apostrophe, phone. Can you tell me something about collective now? Very simple concept, collective now. One word to talk about a group. When I call you all, Class, group of students. When I call you or when I call someone audience, group of people who are watching or seeing or enjoying some sort of entertainment. That's what comes under collective noun. I hope that I have cleared up all of your doubts. Ma'am, can you tell me, oh my goodness, Ankita, you're on a roll today. Abstract, we have seen. It is not something that you can interact with. I cannot touch an abstract noun. I cannot smell. I cannot taste an abstract noun. It is feelings. It's what I feel. Right? It's what characteristics I have. Love, hate, intelligence, patriotism. It's these concepts that are abstract noun. Concrete noun, direct opposite. 
things that I can touch, like the cell phone, I can touch it. See, there is a sensory element. Okay, I hope that clears that up, uh, Ankita. I hope you can actually write and tell me I'm just cleared up. Okay, can you explain what is possessive noun? Okay. For sure, Nazima, I would love to do that. Possessive noun. We know possessive means possessive means something that belongs to someone, right? Shweta's phone. This is not just any phone. When I say phone, it becomes common. Possessive is Shweta's. Shweta's phone. That is what comes under possessive. Okay? And anytime you have to use a possessive, you saw the PPT. Right? I'm just resharing the PPT again. I know our time is a little bit up, but I will just clear your doubts because I don't feel like ending it without clearing your doubts. Right? I'll just quickly clear it up. I hope you can see my PPT. I hope you can see my PPT. Right? In that, you will see that I have very clearly written that it requires an apostrophe plus an S. What is apostrophe? Apostrophe is the symbol. S is just added to show the possession. The bo sister's shirt. Boy's basketball team. Right? That is what comes under possessive noun. Anything else? Uh, feelings are you telling? Yes, feelings. Feelings such as, I told you, love, hate. I'm talking about your general concepts. Love, hate. All those things come under abstract. Yes, Nazima. Thank you so much for asking. Thank you so much for interacting, each and every one of you. Teacher, can you tell me, are there mathematics classes? Uh, A1 gamer, I am not sure if uh, I'm not sure about this. Uh, if at all there is, I will most definitely, I think someone from Let's Do would let you know. But as of yet, I'm not very sure if there is any. <laughs> Quite a lot. Ah, uh, Thank you, Vivek. We are so happy to receive your amazing comments. It makes us happy as tutors to interact with all of you. Thank you so much. Yes, boss is for that. Uh, anything else? Uh, thank you, Anshika. Yes, I shall stay. You know. Noun phrases. Noun phrases I will take up in the upcoming class. Remember, this class I'm only dealing with noun. Noun phrases might make it a little bit confusing. So I'm going to deal with noun. I'm sorry, Kirtan, that my voice is not clear, but I highly suggest that you use earphones. Right? Ankita, I know you asked for noun phrases, but this class we're dealing with nouns. So I will take it up in the upcoming classes since that's a bit of a complicated topic, respecting everyone's uh, attack over here, uh, you know, comments over here. So that's why. Okay. Okay. And my compound nouns. Your compound nouns, they belong to you now, Ankita. Compound nouns we saw, no? When two nouns, two words are pushed together to make words. So many of you all made such amazing words over here. Right? We saw so many good words that were made, merry-go-round and things like that. Right? We saw quite a lot of new words. Right? I hope you guys go through our links that is given over here. Please, uh, please go through all of the links that we have added over here regarding our... Please, Ankita, please scroll behind a little bit or else I am just adding the link right now. I want you all to please go through the links that we put regarding our Let's Tute website, right? I want you all to go to our website, right? And go through all of our courses, especially our spoken English course, which is fabulous. You get so much. You're going to learn so much. You also have a free course over there, right? We also have a free course over there. I'm just resharing everything already. Uh, we have put it up. I'm just resharing. And also, please read our blogs, right? We do have uh, our English magazine, Just English. And one of the most important things that I can tell you all is that we are also are going to come out with a grammar book, which is going to contain all of these concepts every single part of grammar we're going to distill it down it is going to have a lot of amazing exercises and i can't wait for all of you to uh, the day when we publish it so that all of you uh, 
our dear students and viewers will get to read, interact, and uh, you know, enjoy with it, right? So, uh, yes, Sankita, common gender. So the reason why I didn't pick up uh, gendered nouns today is also because of the fact that I didn't want to overburden you all. Plus, it is not usually done. Gendered nouns are nouns that have uh, used for a particular gender. We call them masculine, feminine, right? Masculine for men, feminine for women, right? Uh, nowadays, as much as possible, we're trying to use gender neutral language. Now, when I say call gender neutral language, what I mean? Common for both men and women. We don't say spokesman. We say spokesperson. We're trying to be more gender neutral, right? Uh, A1 Gamer, yes, what suggestions do you have? Ah, yes, uh, Surya, we went through irregular plural and regular plural noun. We saw the rules, no? The rules are associated for regular plural noun. Irregular plural noun are nouns that take a completely different form. Can any one of you give me an example of an irregular plural noun? Man, men. Woman, women. All of these words come under person, people. All of these words come under irregular plural noun, the ones who are not obeying the rules. Remember I told you what? The nouns who don't obey the rules, they come under irregular plural noun. Hi, Aditi. Anybody else? Any doubts? Please let me know. Anything that you wish to add? Anybody? Final call? Ma'am, instead of having only 30 minutes of session, can we have one now? For sure, next time, if everyone is willing, we can most certainly extend it to an hour. For sure. You can definitely do that. Ah, material noun. Okay, uh, coming to Kirtam's material noun. Material noun, again, what happens is all these nouns that you see that are, you know, you know further divided, they are, they are actually a part of the basic ones that I taught you. Material noun are materials, things such as wood, cotton, satin. Right? They are like the raw materials from which we get things. Gold, silver, all of these things come under material now. Again, it is absorbed by common now. Concrete now, part of common now. All of these things get absorbed in the moon. Mice, geese are irregular problem. Yes. Mouse, mice, goose, geese. Very good, Aditi. Uh, I'm glad, Ankita, this is what we want to do. Ma'am, what is bare infinitive? Uh, Nazima, now that is coming to verbs, I will just quickly say, bare infinitive is like the first form of the word, the simple that we use in the present tense. It will be coming up in the upcoming classes. I want you to wait so that you can learn. Interrogative noun. Hmm. I've heard of uh, interrogative noun. Uh, Nazima, I think you will need to recheck that. I think there is a... We usually don't I'm not very sure about that, Nazima, to be very honest. I've heard of adjective, but not, not so much. Ankita, it's going to be next week, Saturday, same time, 5. Sharp at 5, it will start. We'll be back with another session. Okay? That is sentence. Okay. I see a lot of mysterious reply. So before I wind up, anybody else, anything that anybody else wants to add? Anything? Ah, interrogative sentence. That's better, Nazima. You confused me so much. So to ask questions. Anytime can Aditi has asked a question. Can we write our English answers correctly in examination? Interrogative sentence. What is your name? Interrogative sentence. Right? Ah, Aditi. Yes, you can, Aditi. If you work hard, if you study your grammar, you practice, you join our live sessions, join our courses read the magazine, you will obviously see that difference. You will be able to write, okay? All right. So wonderful that all of you are interacting, all of you are getting along. Uh, yes, we have also put the this week edition of our magazine. Please read it. It is on World Chocolate Day. Did you all know that July 7th was World Chocolate Day? Please click on that link and read our magazine. You're going to learn a lot of new words and you're going to learn a lot of new phrases. Right. And anything else anybody wants to add? I am going to wind up the session soon. Okay. So 
All right. Anything else? Please let me know while I wind up the session. I would like to uh, be happy that I've cleared up all your doubts before I wind up, obviously. So that will be fantastic. Ah, very good. All of you introducing yourself. You're using a proper now. Much very nice. Anything else? Oh, is that so, Ankita? That's good. Your topic is coming in your exam. Please study well. Please listen carefully, etc. You can improve attending live sessions, studying well, reading newspapers, magazines, etc. All right, A1 Gamer, bye. See you. Is sand singular or plural? Good question. Good question. Ritturaj, good question. Uh, but I want you to know that we would. It's sand is a kind of term that it cannot be quantified. When I say sand, I'm not talking about one piece of it. I'm talking about sand in general. So sand is in that in between, say. But then when you talk about a very famous book by Sidney Sheldon, it says the sands of time. We usually just use sand, right? We never say sands usually, unless it's in a very poetic sort of a sense. Otherwise, we simply say sand. The desert sand is very gritty means what it gets into us right and i hope that how can we improve grammatical mistakes by writing by reading by practicing and remembering all the rules of grammar without fail that's good that's good akshay congratulations that you got good marks okay uh, when it comes to word like hair hair is plural by itself it's plural by itself. You do not say hairs. I should never see any one of you say hairs because that is wrong. Hair. All right. Thank you, Priyanshu. Thank you so much. We are all we are also happy to support you, our dear students. Always happy to help. Okay, yes, Aditi. Final call. Tell me. What question do you ask? What question do you want to ask? Tell me. I am also glad that all of you are going in a very polite manner, that you're keeping the chat very polite and glad that there is no trolling as of yet. Uh, anything else, please let me know. Any doubts with regard to nouns, I'm ready to solve. Again, I'm adding whoever is joined right now, kindly go through our links. We have added links to our magazine, to our spoken English course, to our website. And we have also revealed the news that we are going to be coming out with an upcoming book. Okay. Uh, Total grammar for about class 10. Akshat, uh, all of this will be coming in our upcoming topics. Today we have just picked up one topic. Okay, just upcoming, it's just one topic. Aditya, there are lots of books for grammar. I mean, there's not just one particular book that is very good. You have Oxford, you have Veren and Martin. Now, even we are going to come out with a book. It's what works best for you, what you're able to learn best with. Most important thing is not just learning, but also putting it into action. All right. Uh, Nihal, sorry. Yeah. Ma'am is there for science also. I think so. There must be something. We'll keep you posted. But as of yet, I'm only taking English, so I have no idea for that as of yet. If someone from Let's Do Season, they'll definitely keep you posted on the uh, science classes as well. Okay. So I'm going to wind up the session now. Uh, I wish you all a very good evening. And I also wish that all of you rejoin our sessions and that we have such a pleasant interaction with each other because the best thing about internet is this. The best thing about YouTube is this. You and I, we are very far away from each other, but we can still interact. We can still share knowledge with each other. And that is something very amazing. So every Saturday at 5, I would love to see you all in this space of ours in, at Let's Do, where I will be definitely taking up a topic. And I will also be keeping you updated on all the new initiatives that we are doing here at Let's Do, because we want to push the boundaries when it comes to education. And I want you all to be there. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being such a wonderful audience. And I want to see you all next week at the same time. Thank you all. Please take care of yourself. Thank you. Bye-bye.